All right, good morning. Let's get us going this morning. All right, so we're gonna make sure we are live. Sharing now. Good morning. All right. Live that is public. All right. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Darla. Good morning, uh, cousin. And good morning. Good morning. All right. We're going to get started in just just a second on, um, you know, I, I got to tell y'all something. So y'all stay with me here. Stay with me. Where is it on my page? All right, there we go. Good morning, Miss Leslie. Happy Thursday to you. So let me start off by saying, you know, God is just really good. So uh, let me start off. Let me, let me, because uh, I'm super excited. You know, I get excited sometimes and I just jump in. So I want to welcome you to Mount Movers Prayer. This month we're teaching on and praying from the theme, It's Time to Celebrate. And I'm Apostle Dr. Jewel Williams. I'm one of the lead pastors of Bundle Life Worship Center. Uh, we have services on Sunday, our prayers at nine. We are now um, um, going live with that. And then our morning services at 930. We've been trying to work it out. So if you don't catch us at 930, try to come back at 10. Sometimes with the music, we've been having a little difficulty, but we have just decided we're going to keep trying it. And then we have Bible study via Zoom. Uh, good morning, um, Pastor Prince. So, uh, so as we go into today's lesson, good morning, Jacqueline. You know, I I said last week, I said, oh, this is going to be good. It's a time to celebrate, right? You know, when we hit celebrate, first thing we think, well, we finna have a party. We finna have fun. The Lord rebuked me uh, the other day and said, uh, Jewel, no, that's not what this is about. He said, it's not about the getting ready to have a party part. He said, this is about celebrating through, good morning, Beth. And he said, this is tell my people that it's time to celebrate, but I'm going to teach them what really is an old thing he's already told us. But he said, he's giving us some new battle strategies. Uh, and so the celebration is, is we got to learn how to do what James 1, 2 through 8 says, how we got to count it all joy, no matter what we going through. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, that, that right. That's what I said. I can already hear what y'all saying. Wait a minute. That ain't what I tuned in. You said we were celebrating. Yes, I did. And God said, this is how we celebrate. So I want to take us through a very um, familiar scripture. Many of you probably have heard it preached, um, heard it taught. Um, and so I want us to go to Second Chronicles 20. I'm going to read from 1 through 30, but I'm going to break it down. So I'm going to try to go through it. But God is saying he want me to teach us and I'm talking to myself as well what he is calling these new battle strategies and they come from a place of celebration. Come on, somebody. So this going to be good. And so today's lesson and theme is the battle is the Lord. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming on in. And as you come in, make sure you just go on and share it out because somebody else probably need to to hear this word as well. Amen. Tag a friend, tag a Tag a, a sister, brother, mother, somebody. Amen. So let me start to read. I'm, so the first piece of scripture, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I'm reading 2 Chronicles 20, verses 1 through 4. First of all, I want to make sure, can you guys hear me okay? Because to be honest, I got on like three fans because this little thing is a little box and it'd be hot. So I want to make sure you can hear me. Uh, if you can hear me, say I can hear you. So 2 Chronicles 20, verses 1 through 4, reading the New Living Translation says this. After 
this, the army of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Mennonites. Okay, thank you. Declare war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Seas. Wonderful. Wonderful. They are already at Hazron Tamar. This was another name of Eden Gedai. Um, Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all of the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. All right. So what does this have to do with us celebrating? Well, the first thing we have to understand, many times what keeps us from looking at our battles is the right way is because we're not looking at the battle itself. We're just looking at, oh, I'm being attacked, but we're not looking at it in a strategic way. So let me help us help. Let me help you and me today. So the first thing that this scripture showed me is sometimes your own people give access to the enemy's attack against you. Let me pause there for a minute because I really want you to hear what I'm saying. Sometimes your own people, your own people give access to the enemy's attack against you. So we see Jehoshaphat is in distress, right? Because of the unexpected attacks coming against him and the people of God. When you do a deeper study, it would seem that the enemies had to have given, uh, I mean, the, 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 the surrounding uh, tribes, those 10 tribes that lay beyond the Jordan, had to have given the enemy access to even be able to march through and get to them. Good morning. So let me say that again. What did I'm saying? Sometimes your own people give access to the enemy's attack. So in here, Jehoshaphat, he, 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 these enemies have been given access by way of the people that should be standing with him. I like what one commentary said. It says, they gave them passage through their borders. So ungrateful were they to Jehoshaphat, who had lately put his hand to help them in recovering Ramad Gilead. See, there's a message in this that I want us to understand. Don't be surprised that some of the same people you help become the, the, the same folks that the devil used as the gateway to try to attack you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, we have to learn that the enemy, he's not going to go pick the stranger down the street to get on your nerve or to attack you because you have no relationship with the stranger down the street. He's going to try to use those that are closest to you. Now, they got to give them access. They got to become that gateway. But God is saying to us, don't be surprised. Uh-huh. He said, don't be surprised at the same people that you have labored for, that you went into battle for, that you went into intercession for, that you prayed and labored and poured into, that they now become the gateway for the enemy to attack you. Uh-huh. But this is what happens. Our response is we tend to focus on the attackers. Oh, why are they doing this to me? What did I do to them? All I did was be nice to them. All I did was pray for them. All I did. But see, when we uh, uh, put our attention on the attacker, we allow the attacker to distract. Come on, somebody. We allow the attacker to distract. And see, that's part of the enemy's plan. This I is. That's part of the enemy's plan in defeating us. If he can hit us where it hurts and then use, a, use that to distract us and keep us in this place of bondage and keep us in this place of defeat and keep us in this place of, of, of these types of things, then guess what happens? Then we miss seeing and hearing what God has for us. But see, what, what Jehoshaphat shows us is this. While he was immediate, initially he was fearful, he didn't let his fear draw him away from God. He let his he let the fear draw him to God. So when we become fearful, instead of Jehoshaphat, he didn't run and hide. He didn't go and complain. He didn't give up. He didn't get into this, this too hard for me. He didn't get into none of that. What he did was he went into the mode of seeking from God. He found a way to, even though everything seemed chaotic, he found a way of becoming submissive and submitted himself unto God. And when he did that, then he said, I'm going to God to seek God for guidance. What's guidance? Guidance means instruction. It means leadership. It means help. It means advice. 
enemy support. So as the king, he was the leader of the people, but he called and he said, okay, I'm going to, we need God, right? He said, we need God. But what he says is I'm going to call the people together as well. So we can come and fast together. See in the battles we face, we need to face our fears by seeking instruction from God. How do I pray, Lord? What am I praying about? How do I feed the attack that's coming against me? Because see, this is what blessed me. It was, it was, it was not just one territory, it was not just one army coming against them, it was several. The enemy will send clusters of attack. That's what the, the Lord called it. He said clusters of attack. The enemy will send clusters of attack against you. And we instantly say, Lord, why me? Why me? And the Lord said, It's time for us. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, It's time for us to actually start to say, while I don't want to be under attack. It's time for us to, to look at how we're being attacked. When you're being attacked by clusters of attack, that means one demon wasn't enough. Can I? Can you hear what I'm saying? What God is trying to tell you is you done raised up. You done elevated. So because you have elevated, the enemy can't attack you with that same little thing that used to bother you. So he got to bully on you. Uh -huh. He got to put some bullying spirit. He got to try to get more than one that come against you. And so that's why we need to turn for guidance because we need the Lord to break that thing down. We need him to give us advice. We need to pray and say, okay, Lord, lead us through this time because we don't know which way to go. We ask the Lord to support from his Holy Spirit. We also ask him to send us intercessors in our season. See, God is actually preparing intercessors so that we are not going alone, huh? that you're not walking through this thing by yourself. That's why he had to call the people together so that they became one. I cannot tell you, brothers and sisters, uh, when we come together, I teach these lessons. But I'm also saying, can you be an intercessor with me? When I pray as the Lord lead me, can you join in with me? And we began to in intercede. So it's not that God just heard my prayer. He heard us as a community. He heard us as one voice coming together. You don't have to be the sound that's coming through the mic, but God hears your sound in heaven. So you can pray right where you are when I pray. And together, our voices become one and we begin to do what God can do for us. That's why we need to celebrate because we got more power than we've been thinking we do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so as we go through, we need to make sure ooh, we need to make sure that we get the things from God that he has for us. So then he said, Joel, you that, that was part one. So what now is the new strategy? What, what is the new battle strategy? Because remember, we're talking about this time to celebrate. So this new battle strategy is instead of us becoming discouraged, Instead of us focusing on the attack or the attacker or who is who are the people attacking us, God says, turn your focus to me. Now, I know that's a very elementary thing. We know we already should be doing. But he wants to remind us that the onslaught, onslaught of a battle at the very beginning of it, that the victory is already ours. Somebody put that in the comment. I already won. I already won. It hits you, but say to yourself, I already run. Uh-huh. It's coming against my finances, but I already am victorious and I am already walking in the prosperity God has for me. That thing trying to hit your health. I'm already healed and I'm walking in the healing that God has for me. It is already mine. And so God says, we need to learn how to celebrate, not after we win in the natural. See, we wait till we see it in the natural. God said, it's time to celebrate in the now uh -huh. in the moment that god is take taking us to and through some stuff that is the moment that is the time to celebrate so i began to celebrate now for what god is going to do yeah i might still be going through a thing yes you might still be going through the thing but our new way of battling is to quickly utilize our resources not only use them, but give thanks to God because he not only supports us, he leads us, but he's going to send the right people to help us in our times of need. See, the devil really wants us to believe no one is supporting us. How many have, uh, you can raise your hand in your house because the Lord knows it. How many of us have said, Lord, nobody helped me. I got to do this all by myself. Even if no few human person showed up, you ain't never alone. Ha. You are never alone. You are never alone. You are never alone. Because in this new battle, 
God is saying, even if no person shows up, I am already there. God, in fact, says, not am I already there. Mm -hmm. You catching up to me. Listen to what I'm saying. God says, I've already gone before you. So in the battles that we are getting ready to face or battles that are ahead of us, God said, I'm already in the battle. Oh, holy ghost. He said, I'm already there. So you get to it and feel like you got to say, Lord, help me, help me, help me. See, see, see. And he going, daughter, son, I already see because I've already been here. I've already been before you. I've already been preparing a way. I've already been preparing the strategy because I know exactly how the enemy is going to hit. I know exactly how he's going to try to uh, stop you. And so I'm already before you. I'm already in it. I'm just waiting for you to catch up so that you can go through it and see what I already see, what I already said, what I already declared. Thank you, Jesus. Is that not something to celebrate? Is that not something to celebrate? We began to stop looking at our trials and our tribulations as though God is sitting somewhere like this. He's sleep on us. He ain't sleep on us. He already ahead of us. Woo, Jesus. We catching up to him. He already ahead of us. That just blessed me right there. All right. Moving on to the next part of scripture. I'm reading in 2 Corinthians 20, verses 5 through 12. And this is what the scripture says. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard of, at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, O Lord God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all kingdoms of earth. Ooh, come on, somebody. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. O our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when the, when the people of Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here, built this temple to honor your name. They said, they said, whenever we are faced with any calamities such as war, plague, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us and you will hear us and rescue us. And now see what the armies of Ammon and Moabite and, and Mount Seir are doing. They would not let our ancestors invade. You would not let our ancestors invade their nations when Israel left Egypt. So they went around them and did not destroy them. Now see how they reward us for they have come to throw us out of your land which you gave us as an inheritance. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us, but you, we do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. Come on, somebody. We are looking to you for help. Let me tell you what the Lord said about that. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what the Lord said about that. He said, praise instead of panic. Come on, somebody. He said, get your praise on instead of panic. See, Jehoshaphat, after calling the fast, he stood and began to seek the Lord. But let me tell you, he didn't go into, he didn't go into the war with me, war with me. He said, I'm going to start off by honoring God. Because you see that in verse five and six. He declares that God is the God of heaven and ruler over everything. And as we began to declare these truths, they are also serve as an encouragement to us. See, he began to say, oh, I know who you are. God is saying in our times of prayer and intercession, don't come with the oh, whoa, 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 whoa first. He said, come and remind yourself because you ain't reminding him because he already know who he is. He said, come and remind yourself by repeating my attributes, by repeating to yourself who I am. He said, when you begin to say to yourself who I am, then that gives you some confidence to know, oh, wait a minute, the God of heaven is fighting for me. So this new battle strategy of celebrating calls for us to celebrate our relationship with God. Now, 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 if you ain't got one with God, you can't celebrate. So that means we got to make sure we have a relationship with God. And I don't, I'm not talking about stopping at salvation. Are you meditating in his word? Are you speaking to him daily? Or is he just a panic button? Is he just when you're in a panic, then you push the button? I need the God button because, you know, he the red phone just when it's emergency. I'm not going to make, ooh, I like that. God said, don't use him like he the red phone. Y'all used to watch Batman. I know I'm old, but in the old Batman, they hit the red phone and the, 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 mayor would, uh, the, the mayor would call it for Batman when everything got crazy. They would open the door and pull out the phone and they would only call uh, the red phone or whenever, when, when they need it. Well, God said, stop treating me like the red phone. You need to call me every day. Mm -hmm. Every day, several times a day. 
other day. You need to have conversation with him because this is how when we build our relationship with him, then guess what? This is how then we can go back and recite what Jehoshaphat did. When we're in these battles and we're in these wars, we can then go back and say, oh, well, Lord, you're going to do this because I've seen you do it in the past. You, These are the promises. You can't recite to him the promises if you don't know. Them. Come on, somebody. So we sometimes we spend too much time focusing on what the devil is doing. Let's start rehearsing it in our conversation, what he is doing. And let's start celebrating what God is doing by reminding us of who he is, because he already knows who he is. He says, so you, you got to do that. And then that leads us to well, once we're not only praising. But then we got to repeat his promises. See, Jehoshaphat began to repeat the promises of God. So after celebrating God and saying, yes, you are the God of heaven, he started to, to, to rehearse. He started to repeat. He said, wait a minute. You already drove them out. You drove out the inhabitants because you gave this as our inheritance. God said, stop letting the enemy convince you that you got to give up what God has already gave you as an inheritance. So the enemy is going to attack you in those areas, but they already yours. So Jehoshaphat said, let me remind you, uh, God, let me just, let me, not just that I'm reminding you, I'm really repeating it for myself so I could remember that you already gave us this land. A and then not only that, but you said when we face with any calamity, we can stand before you and seek your face. And I love this because he said any cal cal calamity, war, plague, are we not in a plague, in a famine? He said, whatever we are faced with, we can stand before him. We can ask for him. And when we ask from him, he's going to do for us. He's going to see about us. And so the message then for us is we need to celebrate that we have promises from God in the midst of our battles by repeating them to God. So in the midst of your battle, when the enemy trying to tell you, you by yourself, you defeated, you don't got this, you don't got that. You just say, no, no, no. I'm not even listening to you. I'm going to repeat in my own hearing what I already have been promised. And then I'm not going to worry about it because, you know, that scripture says, so a man thinks so is he. You know, God brought that new revelation about that. He said, we always think that mean, well, if I'm thinking on sin per se, then I'm going to live sin. No, if you are meditating, thinking on worry, if you meditate, thinking on what's going to happen wrong, can I tell you, you're going to become that. That which you start to think on and meditate on, you will bring into your atmosphere. You will bring into your life. So if you waiting for God to heal you, don't keep meditating on I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. Because guess what's going to happen? You're going to stay sick, stay sick, stay sick. You got to start saying, God said I'm healed. So I'm going to start meditating on I'm going to start repeating. I'm going to repeat that promise because that's the promise he gave me. And I'm going to wait on it. I'm not going to. And I ain't got to beg from God. We're not paupers that we got to beg from our father. We go and say, God, thank you for the healing. I celebrate that I'm healed in Jesus. Name. I celebrate that I am not in lack. I celebrate that every promise, every promise, every promise that you've given to me, I have and I shall walk in it. So we tell him, we remind ourselves of these promises. And then we do this in this new way of battling, this new battle strategy that's coming from a place of praise. And so while we have forces coming against us, we remind ourselves that no matter what we face, we have promises from God and God is going to be faithful to keep us. He's going to uphold us. Therefore, guess what? You don't got to go into panic mode. We don't have to fret. And we can stay in this calm place, this submitted place to him. Why? Because we trust him and he will take care of us. Can I tell y'all a little brief it, it thing? You know, I learned a lot of lessons from a lot of things. So I've been like vegetating or watching the dog whisper. Any of y'all ever saw the dog whisper? And what I the, the lesson I took away from the dog whisper was this. He was telling the people they dog was attacking and 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 the dog was just coming after them and and a lot of times they couldn't figure out and so when 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 Caesar Milan would come into the scene to try to get the dog to stop going for him he would say you have to have this calm submitted energy you got to be the one that comes in in authority you got to walk in the authority because he said if you don't walk in authority the dog ain't gonna ain't gonna respect you can i can i replay can i can i apply that spiritually if you and i don't walk in the authority that god given to us the devil has no respect for us and he gonna whoop us he gonna attack us he gonna growl at us 
He ain't going to flee. We can quote that scripture, uh, the devil, devil get thee behind me all we want to. He looking at us sideways going, but I have no respect for you because you ain't walking in no, th no authority and power. Until we submit ourselves and come humbly under God and say, you know what? Even though everything is going crazy, I know that I'm walking in the authority that God gave to me. And I'm trusting that even as the stuff comes to attack me, I'm not going to get bit. Why? Because I have the upper hand. And I'm going, if I got to wrestle with you for a minute, devil, I'm going to wrestle until eventually you understand you're going to have to submit. You under my foot. I am the one walking. I am the pack leader. <laughs> I'm not following you. I'm not following you, devil. I'm not going to follow your attempts to, to dominate me. I am not going to be dominated. I'm going to walk in the authority that I have. I told you I learned lessons from all kind of stuff. I learned lessons from all kind of stuff. And so it's like, and, and, and then what was what, what else in, in the dog whistle that blessed me is when the person finally realized their power, even other dogs that wasn't they dogs submitted. Can I tell you something? When you walk in the authority of God, not only the demon hitting you, but all demons have an understanding that you somebody to reckon with. Not meaning they won't come because they're going to still try to attack. But that's why they got to come in clusters because they realize, oh, I can't do this by myself no more. I got to attack even in a fuller way. But I'm telling somebody today, you got to start. I got to start walking in the truth that God has already given us the authority so we don't have to be in here fret. Oh, Lord, what am I? No, he says, stand up and celebrate. See, who Jesus, who Jesus. All right, let me go to my next scripture. I'm going to Second Chronicles. Let me make sure I am in the right place. Yes, Second Chronicles. Is this blessing you? Good, good. That's right. Thank you, Tanya. I want to know this best you because see, I told y'all last week. I said, "What are we gonna talk about celebrating this month?" And I, for those that just came on, I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna celebrate." I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna party." Y'all talk. He said, "Uh, uh, no." He said, "No, uh, uh, we ain't talking about no party." He said, "I'm gonna show you how to have the right kind of battle strategy." And it's one of celebration. I said, "Oh," he said, "Yeah, what's one of celebration?" Ah, that's right. That's right. I am here. We got to start declaring the thing in advance. Uh, so Second Chronicles 20, 13 through 30 says this. As all of the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives and children, the spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. A Levite who was a descendant of Asper. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Let me read that one more time. This is what the Lord said. This ain't, this ain't a happy feeling. This ain't hooked on a feeling. This ain't an assumption. This ain't a I think. This is what he says. God says, do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And he said, tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the accent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens in the wilderness. But you will not even need to fight. Can I tell some of us? See, many of us are fighting, but we don't realize why we get tired because we fight with our own strength. God says, step back because you won't have to fight. He said, I'm going to take it. He said, you will not even have to take your position. Then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Don't be afraid of discour or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohat and Korah stood at, to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Then early the next morning, and I'm going to jump. They got up. And this is what Jehoshaphat said. He said, listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe the Lord your God and you will be able to stand firm believing in his prophets and you will succeed. This is that scripture that people often tell you about. Believe what the prophets say and you will succeed. You better believe if it's a true prophet. Let me put that in. And you will succeed. So he said, after consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army. Who sings before? Who sends singers? Who praises? Who sees when you're going into battle? God said, this is the thing that I'm trying to tell you. Y'all been going in with your armor hung up, with your, with your fists out. He said, I'm talking, telling you to go in singing, go in praising. He said, the singers and the Lord praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. 
Give thanks to the Lord for he is a faithful, his faithful love endures forever. And it says at the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies to start fighting against themselves. Uh huh. They start fighting against themselves until the point, and I'm skipping around, they killed every one of them. They killed themselves. So the army, when they arrived to, to the lookout point, all they saw were dead bodies laying on the ground. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. Come on. And then King Jehoshaphat went and out and gathered the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuables. And so I'm going to stop there. And, and, and then towards the end, when they went back in, they marched into Jerusalem singing. They were surrounded and they, and they were by, by the, the music. So what is it I'm trying to tell you today? First of all, Let's look at some stuff. First of all, God says, I'm going to send you some encouragement. God says, I'm going to send you some concerts, some encouragement. Because that happened in verse 15. And see, he says, when you come and fast, there's no way that we can fast and seek the God that he won't release a word to you. God is saying right now for some of you that have been seeking, have been asking, have been looking. God said, I'm releasing a word for you. He said, I'm releasing a word concerning your matters. I'm releasing a word concerning the things that you are bringing before me. He said, no, but you got to wait on it. See, Jehoshaphat couldn't make God come faster than ready. God was ready to. And God is saying, some of us say, well, God, I've been asking you for three days. You ain't come. So I'm going to stop waiting. He said, don't let the enemy fool you. You stay in position, stay in formation. You keep asking, you keep seeking. He said, because I'm going to release a word concerning you. And he said, and now I'm not going to release a word concerning you. But in that word, I am then going to give you the instructions. God says, I'm going to release a word that's going to be and give, give you instructions. And part of that instruction is stand your position, stand your position. He told Joseph, uh -uh, I got this. I got this. I just need you to stand where I need you to stand. That's right. That waiting part ain't easy. But he says, stand in position. But let me tell you something about standing in position. First of all, he didn't say go sit. He said stand. So stand means that I'm ready to walk at any moment. God is saying we need to be in a position where we're ready to make a move at any time he tells us to make a move. So he said he didn't tell us to sit down because some of us have sat down. He said, stop sitting down on what I've told you to stand in. He says, so stand in your position. Stand means I'm firmly placed in a position. I'm not moving to the left or to the right. And when you stand in position, that's right, you're also poised. That means I am standing upright. God is saying, stop being bent over. Uh -huh. Stand up like a soldier on position and stand in their post. He said, in this place of standing and being poised like a soldier, you are ready ready to go into war with any time he tells you to do. He said, and as you stand in position, you are also aware because you can't stand as a guard on a post on a wall and you somewhere like this or you sleep because you go to sleep standing up, you're going to fall down. He says, so stand, be alert, pay attention because you not only do he want you to stand and pay attention because he don't want you to miss what he doing. He don't want us to miss what he's doing. He don't want us to miss the blessing. He don't want us to miss the promises. He don't want us to miss it because we got out of position. And so he says the other thing is to worship the Lord for his instruction. So once he give us the instruction, he said, worship him. We got to worship the Lord. That's what verse 18 reminds us. We got to worship him. And I love the song that they sang. The song they said was Give God thanks to the Lord. He is faithful and his love endures forever. So God is saying, worship the Lord for his, your, his instruction. So you, he's given you a word. You fasted, you prayed, you stood in position. He, he's, he's given you, he sent you that word of encouragement. He's telling you to not stand as you listen to the word, as you listen to the instruction. Once you receive the instruction, then you do it, but worship him for it. And then he says, as you worship him for the instruction that he gave you, he look at this, this is all self celebration. He said, release your praise to access the promise. I could just fall out right there. I could fall out right there. If I, if, if I wasn't on the computer, I'd throw my own phone. Let me tell you something. He said, release your praise so that you can access the promise. What am I talking about? You said, great question. 21 says, after consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him. And then it says what? At the very moment, 
they began to sing. This is 22. At the very moment, they began to sing and give praise. The Lord calls the armies to fight against themselves. See, God is saying and telling us, this is the time where I'm teaching you how to war through your praise. He said, I'm teaching you how to war through your praise. He said, when you worship me. See, don't you, have you ever realized the enemy attack? Let me tell you some of the, 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 the way he's attacked. He will attack you. What happens? You get discouraged. You get discouraged. What's the next thing you do? You either stop going to church or you either stop, um, you know, you stop going to church or you will stop praising or you'll stop worshiping. Why? Because he the enemy knows that those are some of your major battle tools. And so he tries to make you step down in your warfare so that now he can really attack you because you let down your guard. You've become defenseless because you stopped your praise. You about to learn how I don't care if you don't feel it. You about to get in your room and be like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, ah, Jesus, Jesus. You better do whatever you need. Yes, you better say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. Father, I need you. You better do whatever you got to do until you feel a break and a release in you so that you can do what God has called for you to do. Because then once you, you get access, there's something else. You're going to get some rewards. <laughs> See, God will restore not only when you've lost something, but God will reward you and reward us for standing strong through the battles. Because in verse 25, and I'm going to talk about this even a little more in one of the uh, later weeks, he said, King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. See, they had all kind of stuff that they got. Don't you know God is saying, we'll thank you. God is saying, if you stand strong in the battle, everything that the devil had and took from you, you going back and taking, you going, to, going into his camp and taking it back. You taking your family back. You taking back things. You taking stuff that wasn't even yours because this wasn't theirs. God said, I'm going to give you some plunder that wasn't even yours. You going to take land. You're going to take people. You're going to take material. God said, I will give you even stuff that wasn't yours. Thank you, Jesus. So what's that battle? What's that battle? What's that battle strategy? What's the battle strategy? God said the new battle strategy is our new strategy is to set that the uh, strategy of celebration requires us to begin to stay focused on our leader. Who is our leader? God. No matter what is going on around us, we are not to be distracted by the attacks or what we think it may transpire to. See, sometimes, and going back to my Caesar, my, my, my dog whisper. See, he, he tried to tell the people some of what was happening in their dogs and why their dogs were vicious and attacking is because they were so focused on what they thought was going to happen and they started to make it happen it wasn't until they changed their mindset and walked in the now it didn't matter that this happened before but in the now i'm staying focused i know what i want and guess what happened what they want started to happen so god is saying stay focused stop thinking on what and stop coming up because see lord jesus maybe y'all ain't like me i'm a writer so unfortunately i have like seven eight different endings to a, to a story and god said you got to stop writing the story because it ain't yours to write let me write the story let me end the story you just stay in the now and focus on what i'm telling you to do and then you ain't got to worry about this not happening or that happened because guess what you know what else happened we can make ourselves tired because we done came up all of these scenarios he said keep your focus on me he said, let me stay in the front. I'm staying in the front. You stay calm and just walk behind me. And God said, he's going to walk you through the process because we know that he will, he, he ends us by encouraging us and he will give us that encouragement at the right time. And with that encouragement, we're going to come with some instruction. That's what, that's what Jehoshaphat asked for. And then when we go to war, W-A-R, worship, that's war and worship. When we go to worship, what we will see is God come and take care of us. God will use your worship in ways you have no way of knowing. And then God is going to reward us. And, and, and I'm going to touch a little bit more on this in one of the later ones when, when God told us about celebrate, go get your spoiler. But God will reward us with those very things that the enemy has. He has your hope. For some of you, the enemy has taken your hope. That's right. That's right, Ty. You got to stop writing my own story. I'll be writing my own story. I'll be just doing all. And Lord's like, Jewel, what are you doing? 
Because you know what was happening? When I was writing my own story, there was a part of me that wasn't trusting God to write it. Ooh, ouch, ouch, ouch. And it's hard. It is very hard to let somebody lead you you don't trust in. You got to give him full trust. I, something else I learned from, from the dog whisperer. Because he told him, he said, the dog can't follow you because the dog don't have complete trust that you're going to protect him. And that's because you are frazzled. When you stop being frazzled, then the dog will trust you. Well, God ain't never frazzled, but we be frazzled. And so I had to learn, Jewel, God is in control. You can trust him. So now just fall back. Mm -hmm. Fall back. Let him lead. You stop trying to get ahead of him. Fall back. When you fall back, God is going to... God is going to lead us and he's going to lead us well. God is going to reward us with those very things that the enemy tried to take. And he says that not only that, but he going to give you above. That's right. Somebody wrote the double. He's going to give us above what we asked for. So I pray, like I said, this is this going in a different direction than what I thought God, when he talked about his time to celebrate. But I just want to encourage somebody today. If you got a prayer need, I will pray for you. Because first of all, I want us to know that we have the victory. We are already victorious. This is not something we're fighting to get. We just walking it out. We're walking it out. We're trusting the process and we're praising our way through. We're saying, Lord, I trust you. I'm going to give you thanks because your faithfulness and your love endures forever. Father, I'm thanking you right now. I'm singing. I'm praising. And as I'm singing and I'm praising, Lord, I thank you. Why? Because you are, you've given me the victory. And I thank you, Lord God, because there's a scripture that says you sing a song over us. And I thank you, Father God. I, I learned something and that hit me in a different way. Father, if you sing over us and victory happens, why should we not agree with you and seeing what you sing over us as well. So Father, you sing victory over us. Father, I thank you for the new song of victory that you sing over us as your people. I thank you, Lord God, that you sing over us peace. Uh, we have great peace, sweet peace, restful peace, peace that is that endures, peace that allows us to sleep well at night, peace that wakes us up refreshed in the morning. Thank you for the peace of God uh, that passes all understanding, Lord God. We thank you as you sing over us the sound of peace that breaks down barriers, that breaks down fears, that breaks down doubts, that breaks down mistrust, breaks down all of those things that would try to keep us in hindrance. So we thank you today, Lord God, for you sing the song of victory over us. I thank you today, Lord God, uh, th th that you sing victory over us. I thank you, Lord God, that you sing peace over us. I thank you, Lord God, that the song of victory declares that we walk in our rightful inheritance. I thank you, Lord God, that today as you sing over us, you remind us, you remind us, you remind us, remind us uh, that you have already given us a wealthy place uh, and we're going to walk in our wealthy place. That wealthy place is not just about money. That wealthy place is I will walk in the riches and the fullness of what God has for me. You're going to walk in the riches and the fullness of what God has for you. So today, Lord God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are providing everything we need and we walk fully in the abundance of what you have for us. We thank you, Father, that we walk fully in the abundance of what you have for us. Lord God, I pray right now, Lord, that not only would you that you that you sing over us victory, but God, I thank you. We sing over us of abundance. Father, I thank you for the abundance release that you have over given to us as your children in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that we see the fullness of your abundance being released to us. You don't hold any good thing from us. The enemy of our soul has lied long enough. We no longer listen to his growl. We no longer listen to his lie. He is muzzled in the name of Jesus. We walk in the abundance of what you have for us. And Lord, it don't even matter because nowhere in this scripture do I see what Jehoshaphat tried to get back at the enemy. He let you do the duty. So Father, help us to, to forgive those that the enemy has tried to use as a weapon against us. But Father, we release them into your hand. We say, Father, have your way in them. Father, whatever the enemy is trying to do, Father, we just release it. We're going to praise our way through. We're going to sing our way through. We're going to do what you call for us to do. We're going to intercede. We're going to pray. We're going to fast. We're going to listen for instruction. And I thank you for the instruction today. Father, I give you the praise. That's right. Lord God, I thank and pray 
for, for Tanya for balance and, and an equilibrium within her in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because you are the one that helps us stand. Just like I, I saw us in when you said stand in position. Father, as she stands in position, uh, Father, there's a balance that you're giving to her. Father, she's not wavering. She's not getting tired of standing. Father, I thank you for the strength and the balance that you put in her. I thank you for the equilibrium, um, both naturally and spiritually, Father, so that even when things may be moving fast around her, they don't, they don't waver her. They don't make her move. They don't, they don't make green dizziness. They don't bring um, where she loses her balance, both physically and spiritually. I declare that over Tanya in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now for there's a strength that you are releasing to your daughter. I thank you for this new strength, Father. I thank you for this new power. I thank you, Father God, for a greater elevation in her. I thank you, Father, as she stands and waits and praises for the things that, that she and you have talked about, those things that she's brought to you in the secret place, in that place that to she goes, that she talks to you privately. Father, you are right there meeting her. You are right there restoring her. You are right there speaking over her. It's like I see your head bow, Tanya. And as you bow before the Lord, it's like I see him with uh, the like a big picture. And it's like he just pouring it and, and he's rescinding refreshing to you. So Father, release that refreshing to your daughter right now in the name of Jesus. Let her feel the tangible uh, release of it, uh, Lord God. Let her actually sense it, feel it, and know it that there's just a recooling and a refreshing that the Lord is sending upon you. For Father, I just give you praise right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for every need being met. I thank you, Father, for uh, continually to help us. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, uh, Father, that you will be our our strength because father there are many of us that have gone through some attacks and those clusters that you say those clusters that have been coming for more than one person have been coming and trying to attack us and to keep us down but father i thank you in the name of jesus for lifting us up i thank you right now father not only did you lift us but god you are taking care of every single one of the clusters every enemy every avenue that the enemy has tried to infiltrate father you come one way and you're gonna send them another way father they may come at this way but father you're gonna rebuke them that way father so i thank you right now god that we stand in your protection and we can trust you because you are faithful ah because that's what you are that's what they said give thanks to the lord his faithful love endures forever i thank you for your love i thank you for your care i thank you father god that you are doing a great thing in us and I just give you praise for it. Father, that's right. And Father, I thank you right now that no matter how the attacks may come, Father, we are keeping our fo focus on you. You, God, you and you alone. We're not looking to people while we partner with people, but we are looking to you to be the answer. We're looking to you to be the, the, the way that we come out of and get into our next. So Father, I just say thank you. I thank you for having your way in us today. I thank you for the renewing and the refreshing. Father, I ask you to release the deliverer in our lives today. Father, I thank you for the deliverer. Uh -huh, there's areas in our lives, God, where we need your deliverance. There are areas in our lives, God, where we need your peace. There are areas in your in our lives, God, where the enemy has got some of us still locked up. But Father, we're going to stand in position and wait until we see the salvation of the Lord show up. Uh, salvation ain't just that I'm saved from sin, but every salvation. God, you're saving me from attack. Lord, you're saving me from the enemy's uh, attempts. You're saving me from every lie. You're saving me from every assault. You're saving me from everything. So Father, I thank you for your saving grace today. I thank you as we stand in position and see your salvation show up. We give you praise right now. That's right. A renewing, a refreshing, and a rebirth uh, in the name of Jesus. So Father, I thank you. Lord, I pray for Danielle's daughter. Um, Rivers, the muse Rivers, your daughter. Father, I come right now and I thank you for what you are doing in her life. I thank you, God, for this next for her. I thank you, Lord God, that even um, as she moves into her next in terms of her education, Father, I thank you for some doors opening for her, some avenues opening for her. I thank you, Father God, that there's some, some things that you're going to provide for her even in this, this entire year. Lord God, that's just going to blow her mind as she continues to trust after you, as she continues to follow after you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for just the, the door opening, the doors opening, the doors opening, right 
relationships, Father. So I pray you would show right relationship. Any relationship that's not sent from you, but that hell may be trying to sin, we come and sever that right now in the name of Jesus. Because see, the enemy will try to send friendships and we'll think people love us and care about us, but there'll be these friends, these there'll be these people that like Jehoshaphat, where they are the avenue that the enemy is trying to use against us. So Father, close every door so that there's no attack against her in the name of Jesus. So Father, I thank you for just these great reports, great report cards, great, great establishment, things that you're going to do in her life. Father, I say thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we just say thank you for every blessing. We thanking you for everything that you are doing for us. We thank you, Father. And I just pray even for those that are getting ready to start schools, whether you're going to college, whether you feel led to go back and get a degree, a certification. Father, I pray right now for your people that they will find the finances that they need. Um, I thank you, Father God, that they will find the, the right school and the resources. Father, I thank you that they will see your grace. Uh, they will be able to uh, walk through even with a greater wisdom. So I thank you for wisdom in this season being released over your people, uh, Father, so that they can know the strategies and the instruction on how to walk it through. Father, I thank you not only for those instructions, but even some of you that are on jobs, you may have been thinking about doing some kind of certification or something to help you like go to the next level on your job. I hear the Lord say, go for it. So Father, thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, and I think sometimes we'll be afraid because like, oh, I ain't been to school for a long time and I don't know if I could do that. But God said, if am I not with you, um, I will lead and guide you. And so uh, we just give thanks for his love that endures forever because I, I don't know who this is, but it's somebody that's seeking and it may not even be somebody that's on yet. Maybe somebody's going to watch the replay, but somebody is on a job and there's some certifications or some certificates or something that you can go and take that actually once you do it, it's going to open up doors for you financially. And so father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus, because it's got to be somebody that's going to listen to this because he wouldn't give me a word that wasn't for somebody. So father, whoever this person is, whether they're on the live or watch the replay, father, I thank you that they will walk in into it. For those that are live, father, I thank you for any of those that you have said, go back to school, uh, write your book. God said, write your book. If God has told you to do something, it's this place where God is saying part of the new battle is to begin to thank him and to go ahead and do what he told you to do. Um, and so don't let fear any longer keep you from stepping in and do what he's told you to do. He said, because these are going to be the avenues that he provides for you in your next. These are going to be uh, financial avenues. There's going to be spiritual door avenues. There's going to be avenues for you to do what he has called you to do even on a greater level. So Father, we thank you as you give us these new battle strategies that we hear them, that we listen to them, and that we obedient to all of what you have said. And then finally, I know, I know, I know that we're in a season and a time where everything around us seems crazy. But I'm going to go back to what the Lord said in his scripture when Jehoshaphat was reminding God and speaking to God. And he said to him, he said, Lord, whenever we are faced with any calamity such as war, or plague or famine, we come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is high. We can cry out to you to save us and you will hear us and rescue us. I hear the Lord saying, don't let COVID and monkeypox and and gas prices and, and lack of food. He said, don't let those make you begin to focus on the calamity. Come to the one who can fix the calamity. He said, now come to the place of obedience and seek him. He said, some of this stuff ain't going nowhere because many of us are too busy talking about stuff and not seeking him. So Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for what you are doing. And asking that um, we we see it. And Father, I bring Candace to you. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. She had back surgery. So Father, we pray for healing. Father, we pray for every part of her body. Father, we pray right now that everything will begin to regulate. Father, any swelling go down, any anything that uh, is coming against her, her family. Father, we just speak your blessings over her right now in the name of Jesus. Father, touch her family and all of her needs. Father, and even as you are taking her through this healing process, Father, I just speak 
like the tension in her back, uh, that there would that that would go away, and she would begin to even experience the heat of your healing to begin to bring into her body into alignment. Um, that uh, that that she will be able to be comfortable when she sits, comfortable when she walks, comfortable when anything she does. So, Father, we just release your healing spirit above, on her um, and over the things that she's requesting before you. And so, Father, we just come in agreement with her, and we say, Lord, let her stay in position of trust. Stand in position of faith, stay in position of expectancy and see the salvation of the Lord show up and do only things that he can do in your life. So, Father, I thank you for reminding us today that, God, as we continue to pray, we continue to seek your strategy, we continue to hear from you and we continue to say, Lord, have your way. Come and rescue us, Father. So I pray. Even for the fact that we see all of this, the, the COVID, the monkeypox, all of the, the things that are going on. Father, I come first and say, Father, forgive us, for we have sinned. Mm. Forgive us, for we have sinned as your people. We have been prideful. We have been haughty. We have thought too much of ourselves. We've tried to make our we've tried to make ourselves the leader, and we have stopped following you, the leader. So, Father, forgive us as a people for getting out of line, for becoming too puffed up in ourselves, our abilities, what we had, who we think we are. Uh, Father, forgive us as a body of believers, not acting like a community, instead of coming together as a community and loving each other and showing the world who we are. Forgive us, for we have been fighting and infighting. We've been fighting about your pastor better than my pastor, my choir better than your choir, my church better than your church. And all of it is nothing without your spirit. Nothing. We are nothing. We are nothing. We are absolutely nothing without your spirit. So, Father, forgive us. And, Father, you said that we turn from these things and we seek you and, and that you would heal the land. So, Father, help us as a body begin to turn from those things, that pride, that arrogance, whatever it is. And if we don't know what it is, Father, individually, we say, as your scripture says, search me. Mm -hmm. uh, search me, Lord God. And if there be any wicked way in me, please help me because I want to walk in your way everlasting. So, Father, help us as a people to begin to individually we come and say, Father, show us ourselves so that we can repent. And as we repent, as we humble ourselves, as the body of believers, as we humble ourselves, Father, we stand in expectation of you healing this COVID, removing these viruses, removing the things that have us um, in bondage. Father, we're asking you and we're standing in your presence. We're crying out to you and we're saying to you, rescue us, hear us, save us, and help us, God, because we cannot do it. They said, we don't know what to do, but we are looking to your help. We cannot fight against, we are powerless against these mighty armies that are attacking us. We are powerless without you. And so, Father, as your children, we come humbly and say, Father, forgive us. Now heal our land. Begin to let us see a turn. Let us begin to see a shift, not only, God, in the plagues, but in the violence. Let us begin to see a shift. I live in Chicago. Let us begin to see a shift. Lord God, let the crime rate begin to go down. Let the killings go down. Let, let the robberies, the rapes, the, 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 the abuse, let it go down, Father, until we see it no more. Bring the revival into the land. Yeah, begin to touch people's hearts and minds so that they can turn from their wickedness and that they would begin to cry out and say, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to live for you? What must I do to reach and receive eternal life? So Father, I thank you. So for every person here represented, wherever you are, whatever your city is, I pray that the Lord would begin to, we would begin to see a reversal, a shift in the name of Jesus. That's right, a shift, Lord. Shift these atmospheres. Break down the strongholds in these atmospheres. Father, these clusters of demons that are ruling over uh, principalities and places. Let us begin to see a shift, Lord God, so that your people in those areas, give them the strategies to be able to pray and to begin to see the, the enemy even attack himself, uh, that, they, that, that you begin to show us how the victory is won. So Father, we just give you the praise. 
We give you the honor. We say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So I pray this blessed you today. It blessed me. Um, and so next week, 1030 here every every um week. It is it so next week's lesson is it's time to celebrate and we're gonna continue with you have the victory. God is going to talk to us what victory looks like. Amen. So we, it's time to celebrate. So this week, all this week, just keep reminding yourself, it's time to celebrate. I don't care where I'm at, I'm still celebrating. I, somebody done got on my nerve, I'm going to celebrate. You might be at work and somebody work your nerve, you might just break out in song. They'd be like, okay, this person crazy. But it, that's all right. You're going to celebrate. It's time to celebrate. I feel it so deep. I sense it so deeply. God has got some things lined up for us. But we got to be in position to receive them. And we can't receive them without having that gratitude and that gratefulness in our heart so that we got to do it. See, he said, you can't, many of us have not received it because we have not been battling his way. We got to battle his way. We got to battle his way. Amen. Amen. That's good. Yes. Just watch the replay if you didn't get a chance to watch the whole thing. And I know, Tanya, you said you don't get notifications. I, I tend to do the information will hit my page like on uh, definitely by Wednesday. If you come and hit that to get a reminder, it should remind you when I go live. So thank you for joining me. Um, also, just remember what I always say, what we're going to do. We're going to pray until the mountains are moved. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day.